what's up everybody welcome back i am your host calvin mcclure and you are watching episode three of our ksp 1.8.1 rp1 let's play we begin right away with another flight of our uh, XSP space plane, which we have to partially rebuild with the new motor because if you'll recall in episode two, uh, we had a couple of what were very um, successful flights, all the while being very eventful flights. If you'll recall, our first flight achieved its objective, which was to break the sound barrier and we had started off much too far from Kennedy, uh, so we ended up having to do a a water landing, a water ditch, which was completely successful, seeing as how nobody died, nothing was broken. So uh, that was a all in all a very successful flight, and we followed flight number one with flight number two, which uh, this time around we applied lessons learned and started off much closer to Kennedy. And that too was a very successful flight. I think we reached somewhere around 25 kilometers altitude, which was a new uh, record. We did get an in-flight emergency, our first of the series when our XLR engine ended up burning much beyond its intended lifespan. So we begin episode three with flight number three of our XSP-2A space plane. Our objective this time around is to hit that 320 meters per second mark, which is roughly what Mach 1 is, only do it in between uh, 10 and 13 kilometers, which is higher. I tried here to see if we could reach the 600 meter per second mark, which is why you saw me basically dive the airplane like that. Uh, we still had some fuel left and I figured maybe if we take a really steep nose dive we'll be able to uh, just cross that, that 600 meter per second mark. Unlike the other contract, we don't have to hold it, we just have to hit 600, cross it even if it's a half a second and that would have been enough. So even though we got pretty close to it, um, I don't really think that the Dash 2 has got what it takes to break it. I think the drag in its current configuration is, is too much. The only way really we can kind of mitigate against that is to go higher um, to greater altitudes. But then the problem then is that you're burning more fuel to get to that higher altitude because you have less to burn to get the vertical speed up. Really I think sub 600 is what the limits of this uh, of this plane is capable of really. If we want to break that 600 mark, we're going to need either some improvements on this one or a whole new design altogether, really. But all in all, um, no signs obtained, but a good flight nevertheless. No incidents, nothing major to report. We did get the contract we were after of 320 meters per second. So, a successful flight. So the next objective that we were trying to hit is this one here where we have to try and hold a speed of above 430 meters per second and less than 630 meters per second uh, for 30 seconds in between 13 and 50 kilometers. The altitude we know we can hit um, and the speed of 430 we know we can hit. If you'll notice uh, when I was in the space plane hangar I omitted deliberately to swap out the XR11 engine. The reason being is this flight I intended to be really more of an exploration flight to see how far or how close are we in being able to 
complete this contract with the Dash 2A. So this flight was intended really just to explore uh, the capabilities of the aircraft. And you'll see that I've got, I've just passed the 430 meters per second by the time the, the heads up display came back up. We were at about 470 and had 25 seconds of fuel left. So I knew that this airplane in its current configuration was just not going to be enough. So I cut the engines and just enjoyed the view and the ride back home. So just like we did last time, since we don't have any air brakes, in order to bleed off that excess speed, we're just performing these wide uh, left and right banks, and that way we uh, we can bleed off the excess speed. What we're looking for is about 110 to 120 meters per second at touchdown. So I thought I had fixed this last time around and got the right shoot settings, but apparently not because we got no drag shoot this time, uh, this time around again. Uh, thank God we had good brakes on because we came real close to exceeding the runway length. We came in a little fast, so it took a while before we actually touched down, covered about half of the runway length before we did. So that, uh, that with the absence of a drag shoot means that it was a pretty close call before we came to a full stop. Looking at the contracts, I'm trying to see what's within reach with our current configuration. I know this one here is out of reach, but we've got a couple of altitude contracts that we know we can hit. We've done 25 kilometers already. 30 kilometers and maybe 40 is something that if we just basically uh, go in a steep climb and then a moderately steep dive or whatnot, it's something we could probably hit. So I know I said flight number four was an exploration flight to see if we could hold 430 meters per second for 30 seconds at 13 kilometers. But I figured that I hadn't really executed well on that one. So I thought it was worth at least another shot to just refuel, try it again, and this time be more careful with the execution um, and see if we throttle down at the exact right moment, what kind of performance can we get if we really execute well and maximize our gains? So flight number five is a second attempt at what we were doing in flight number four, only this time with much more careful execution. As soon as I hit that 430 mark, you can see me immediately throttle down and I've got the Delta V stats up to C how fast are we bleeding fuel and then yeah because i didn't swap out the engine that happened again but we're close to kennedy it's really not an issue we know we've got really good gliding performance and gliding characteristics so we do what we did last time and we just enjoy the view and bring her in So much like we did last time, since we're moving rather fast, we'll execute our usual left and right turns and we'll bleed off the excess speed. 
and I figured it was also worthwhile maybe dumping the extra load of fuel that we still had. We usually come in with empty tanks, but this time around, since we still had some on board, I figured it was worth to just maybe dump it to make sure that we've got the smoothest landing possible. At the same time, I was kind of just reflecting uh, as to how pleasant of a time of day it is to go out for a flight. The sunlit background is really quite nice. And finally, we've got a working drag chute, which was good because we came in kind of hot that one time. You can see we bounced off the runway a bit. Typically, I'm trying to hit about 110, and this time we were coming in about 130, 136. So had we not had that drag chute running, I think we actually probably would have uh, hit the runoff on the runway. But the drag chute worked, and we came into a, uh, to a full stop well before the end of the runway, which is great. So at this point, with flights four and five done, it's fairly obvious that we've reached what the two A's capabilities are. So it was time for the next evolution, and the objective here was really maximizing speed, and the best way to do that was to reduce the drag profile. And the easiest way to do that was to shorten the wings so that we produce less drag, we've got less pressure drag, less skin drag, and hopefully that will be enough for us to reach that next milestone of holding 430 meters per second or 30 seconds at 13 kilometers. So that is what the 2B will aim at doing. But before we do that, we've got the last of the Silver Brandt rockets and then that <laughs> happened. It wasn't until I produced this episode and I went back and looked at the footage that I figured out what happened. In my haste in trying to get the second RB engine to light, since we are hot staging, I inadvertently was a little too eager and lit the third stage RB at the same time. But with that last of the sounding rocket contracts done and out of the way, we go full steam ahead with the space plane program. Uh, the first of the new generations is the Dash 2B. And again, we're trying to get that, that contract of 430 meters per second hold for 30 seconds. As soon as I hit the 13 kilometer mark, I level off. And once we hit the 430 meters per second, we throttle down to maximize the duration of the, of the burn to maximize the uh, fuel we have on board. So up to this point, things were going well. The flight was proceeding nicely. We don't have any issues. And then I'm looking at the amount of fuel we've got left and the amount of time we still have to reach. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't think we're gonna make it, but we're gonna burn to completion and we're gonna see how close we can actually try and get. And right there, I very inadvertently dipped below ever so slightly dip below 430 and that reset the timer back so as soon as that happened then for sure we were done there was no way we were able to do it so I aborted the run and just made my way back home as fast as possible. One of the things that I incorporated into the design of the 2B to try and make up for the loss of lift with the stubbier wings was I added flaps. Uh, the idea would be to use settings 1 and 2 at the final moments of the landing 
So you'll see me here, we've got flaps one. We were coming in very nicely, everything was on par as with what it usually is, and very unexpectedly. I went back and looked at the footage and you can you can really see at the exact moment the plane tried to compensate for the roll, compensate for the yaw, and at which point the inputs were exceeded and the plane just nosedived and crashed into the ground. <laughs> 